Okay, as you can see, that took three hours and 13 minutes to render that out. Let's go see how we turn that into a video. So first thing I'm going to do is start Adobe Premiere and make my new project and browse to my second experiment. So I'm here in my folder, second experiment. There it is. That's the folder. Why not call my project the same thing? Now what we're going to do here is actually go and pick a 720p format at 30 frames per second. And this one right here will do nicely. AVCHD 720p. That's an H.264 progressive scan format that will do. Okay, I'm going to go to my preferences, edit the preferences, and go up to general. What that's going to do for me is allow me to make sure that my still image default duration is set to one frame. When I'm done with this, importing those images, I'm going to set that back to 150 the way it should be. Very important for the rest of my classes. Okay, now I'm going to double click in this asset box here and go to my second experiment, digital graphics, second experiment, and there is my second experiment images folder. If I look in there, you will see quite a number of images ending at 960 as predicted. So I'm going to go back up one level and import the whole folder at once. Okay, there's my folder. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and set that back. I'd really like you to get in the habit of leaving it at 150 frames as a default image duration that works for titles too. And then I can drag the whole folder over and you can see that because I set my frame size correct in Mandelbulb and picked the right uh, settings for my sequence now we've got ourselves a nice animation ready to render out. It's going to be a little choppy. We could do a pre-render by shortening up our work area bar We'll just render out the first little bit and see if that goes a little more smoothly. Okay. Can just extend that, render out a little bit more. All right, let's watch that. As you can see, silky smooth. All right. So instead of having it pre-render all the rest of that out, we're just going to make sure that we're back to the very end of our project. Looks good. And export it. File, export, the media. Instead of this format here, we're going to go to H.264. And we can use the 720p of one of these, the Android tablet. Let me scroll down a little bit. This is not a bad format here. There are others that will work. But this allows us to see that this is progressive to begin with. The size isn't changing. Let's scroll down here. And what I tend to do is just make it one pass and give it as much data as it would like to have. If you have size limitations for some reason, it can only be so big, then you can use two-pass encoding, ramp up the maximum, and then bring this down until you get to the size that you want. If I wanted this to be about 30 megabytes file size, then I would find the right data rate. For these kinds of things, why not just give it as much of an allowance as it would like? If you want it to happen quickly, don't turn this on but I tend to put on maximum render quality here as well and then just let it rip. Give it a name. This is going to be our second experiment. So let's go into second experiment and call it 140927 second experiment. I tend to put in here what the resolution is and what I'm using. If you just use H.264 all the time, then you don't need to worry much about that, but do put what resolution it is in there. 
It is possible at this point, if you have several of these that you want to do, to add it to the queue. And this will be especially helpful when you've got several of them and you want to set up one after another and then let it render all night long, um, then you can do that. To activate the list, start the queue, click there, and then you will start seeing it render output preview down here at the bottom. Again, these are high definition images, so it may take it a while just to get started on these. So let's see if that'll pop up. And there she goes. Again, what that two pass means is that it will analyze the entire video and decide where there's a lot changing on the screen and where the images are pretty much similar from one frame to the next. And then it can decide where to spend its data allowance to give you the best quality video with the smallest file size. Now, if you're making something fantastic like this to show on YouTube, uh, why not just give it as much data as it can possibly use and then upload it to YouTube so that it's the highest quality possible because YouTube's going to compress it on its own. So give it the very best quality you can start with so that you get the best possible outcome. So this is actually not taking very long to render. It's actually a pretty short video. So we'll be able to look at that right now. Having that looping is really nice. If we get ready to go and watch it, there it is. Let's go to our data drive, digital graphics, second experiment, and there's our video. It came out with 56 megabytes. There's the media player. I'm going to turn looping on so you can see what that's going to be like. So definitely some problems with the keyframes on here and there are lots of tips and tricks on how to make things move a little more smoothly. Basically, that'll get us started. Have fun guys.